Good morning, everyone. This is Heath Schumacher over here at Cold Desi uh, with one of, another one of our uh, CAS webinars for uh, for embroidery as of today. Um, what we're going to go through today is going to be going through um, hat hooping. The uh, I know on the calendar the the subjects were reversed, but when you signed up for the webinar, that it did go into the correct one. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go by the schedule that's actually done for the webinars, the ones that you registered for. So uh, this webinar is going to be on uh, proper hat hooping techniques and kind of demystifying like the proper way to do hats, uh, getting them on the machine and things like that, but also give you a little uh, tips and tricks and stuff like that to help you do it. All right. So at any time, you're, anybody is welcome to ask any questions. I have my little questions portal up here on my screen, so I'll be able to see those as they come in. And uh, yeah, we'll go through and uh, show you some good stuff. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my camera over here to the uh, hat frame. Just give me a second here. All right. Let's see if I can get a good angle on this. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. All right, so hopefully everybody can see real quick. Okay, so one of the biggest things that people have problem with is running hats. Um, it's usually uh, the not the really easy ones that they have problems with. It's the ones that are a little bit more popular, the ones that are like low profile or no structure, things like that. All right, so there are a couple supplies I need. Um, first one is definitely most important, a cup of coffee here. If you don't have that, you know, you, the way to tell when you've had enough coffee in the morning is when you can thread a moving needle. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about kind of hats in general. All right, so there's different style hats out there on the market. Um, they have everything from five panels where it does not have a center seam on it to the uh, six panels uh, with the structure, also unstructured, meaning that it doesn't have buckram behind it, that stiff stuff that's behind here. All right, um, and then you have stuff like visors, uh, beanies, uh, bucket hats, things like that. So some of them can be a little bit more pain than the others. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the structured hat first, because these are usually the most popular, They're like your typical baseball hats. They're a little bit easier to hoop, but it'll teach you the fundamentals of the proper way to hoop hats. All right, when you have your embroidery machine, it does come with your drivers to set up hats. Um, you have your hat driver down here that actually attaches to your machine, which allows you to put the hoop onto the machine as well. And then you have your hooping device. Your hat should always be hooped with this device right here. The reason being, it keeps the curvature of the hat, so that way when it's rotating around on the machine, that it doesn't uh, sit there and bind up or hit the uh, pressure feet or anything like that, or make those little clips snap off. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a hat hoop ready. All right, it always goes on one way. Little pegs will be down here towards the bottom. We'll slide that on, make sure those clips hold into place. Sometimes you have to just kind of push them up or pull up on the tabs here. Make sure they stay in uh, the proper position. And then I'll undo my little strap here and put that out of the way. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, hat hooping device right here and make sure that we know what this thing is actually doing for us when we, when we actually hoop a hat. Okay, so what we're going to be doing, if I look at this, you have... A uh, little flat part right here going across, and then there's a groove, that, like a little channel that cuts right here in the front. This is the most important part of this hat hoop, right? This is what holds that bill, holds your hat into place with this little strap here, right? So what's going to go in this little channel right here? That's that width of this bill, right? But on the underside. So that way it doesn't have forward and backward movement and has very, la a very little lateral movement because it's strapped in there with that strap. All right, <clears throat> now there's been a lot of stuff probably out there on the market or uh, technicians, things like that, to tell you that you only need backing in uh, like soft items or stretchy items. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and demystify this to you. I've been doing embroidery since I was probably like eight, nine years old. You will always, always get a better result with your sewing if you have backing in it. I don't care how thick the good is. It's just the way that embroidery works. It's a sandwich. It's a kind of a, um, a push me, pull you type thing uh, that you need to do. It helps you with getting proper tensions and things like that. Also, it takes away the roughness of the material behind there, so that way it doesn't like scuff your thread or anything like that causing thread breaks. All right, so the type of backing that we use for hat is called tearaway backing. All right, tearaway backing is the backing that after it's sewn, you can just literally tear it out. Okay, so with this, depending on um, like what you're going to be sewing is how big a piece of backing that you put in there. Uh, our supply company, Coleman and Company, does sell pre-cut squares and stuff for like front panels. Uh, they also have the uh, larger strips for doing like the 270s. And they also sell it in a big roll as well. So that way you can just pull off as much as you need. All right. The hat backing is definitely a little bit thicker. It's got a, it's like almost like a card stock. Not quite like a, um, um, it's almost like construction paper is a good texture for it. All right. So what we're going to be doing, um, we're going to actually hoop this hat here. So I'm going to do it once just to show you, and then I'm going to pull it off and kind of explain everything I'm doing. But I just wanted to see you, show you how quickly you can actually hoop a hat. All right. Give my uh, backing a little bit of a curve. Place that up here on the hoop. Slide that in. And clip. All right. That's basically hooping a hat right there. All right. So now everybody do it yourself. No, I'm just playing. All right, so let me explain the things that I'm actually looking for when I'm doing this. Okay, let me take this off of here and show you something. As you can see in the backing right here, you see that little groove that's kind of been pressed into it? That's that little channel I was talking about. And what's pushing down in that channel is the underside of this bill on the back side of there to push it down into that groove so that way it has bite or it has hold. All right, so let's put this back on here. All right? We have this little guide here. It's like a centering plate. So just kind of keep that right there. And I'm going to make sure my backing goes around evenly on both sides. All right. The next thing I worry about is in the hat is this little sweatband. If I do not flip the sweatband out and I make the mistake of sewing across of it, it can pucker up and create a wrinkle, which makes it really uncomfortable on your forehead. Or it will just be really uncomfortable on the forehead because you have that stitching there. Uh, and it will actually rub your forehead raw. Your customers will not like that. So it is always a good idea. Well, it's actually, you just have to, is to flip that little sweatband out. All right? So when I pull my hat over, I kind of hold that sweatband up, and then I kind of swiggle this thing back and forth. So that way you can get it to kind of slide under that little centering bracket. Now, a lot of people assume that it needs to go all, this little sweatband needs to go all the way to the back here. That has nothing to do with proper hat hooping, all right? Because these sweatbands, depending on the manufacturer of the hat or the style of the hat, might not be as long or it could be longer. It does not matter. What you're worried about is that, that sandwich of the bill right here, this whip, fitting in that channel. And how do I know it's there? Because it's right at the edge of this little plate. So what I'll do is bring it kind of the, the bottom of the bill here, right up to the edge of that plate, and kind of push down on it. So that way, and I wiggle it back and forth to make sure it's got some bite, because uh, you can see me pulling back and forth here. You don't have to do it as like dramatic as I'm doing it to show you. But just to make sure that it's inside that channel, I can slide it back and forth and kind of push that uh, down in the backing down into that channel as well. So then with one hand, I hold it. So that way it stays in that channel. I do not want it to come out. I'll bring my band over, slide it through, and then over here to the side. What I'm trying to do with this other hand as I'm pulling it over 
I'm trying to make sure that the teeth of the band, these little notches right here, that they fit inside the seam that connects the bill to the crown of the hat. So I'll just kind of push it in there. And before I lock it, I make sure to pull it around, make sure that the teeth go from seam to seam. Not where it's just coming up here on the corner. It needs to be from the exact seam right here all the way to the opposite side and the seam there. So that teeth run all the way through. If it is not in that seam, you're not going to be straight. Your hat will not be straight. And if it's outside that seam, sort of like this, where I can see there, you're never going to get your design centered in the exact same place on it. Plus, you'll have a lot of movement. The hat will move around. You'll get puckering. You'll get, you'll pull. It'll make it look like the design pulls to one side. You'll have all kinds of sewing issues. So, main thing is make sure that the bill is in that groove. And those teeth follow it from seam to seam all the way across. And I'll hold that in place. Latch my little latch over here on the far side. And clamp it down. Not completely done yet. All right. Now, if I was sewing just on the front and it was a structured hat, small design, yeah, I could probably forego the clips back in the back. But it's a good, good rule of thumb to make sure that you kind of just do it the same way every single time. All right. So when you're placing these clips on, there is a proper way to do that as well. Let me see if I can back this up to get a little bit more of a better angle here. When you're doing this, that's why we leave this on that, uh, this frame. See that curvature? That's the same curvature it'll have as it's riding through the machine. So when I'm putting on these clips here, I don't care if this little seam right here is puckered up or anything like that. I want this material to be a smooth going all the way around. So what I do is kind of pull it around, fold it in place, and then I'll use these clips to clip it on. So that way it kind of stays smooth around the edge here. All right. I always face these clips towards the inside of the hat. They have a bend to them for a purpose. So that way when the hat rotates around to the side, that it doesn't hit the side of that presser foot up there on the machine there. We're going to rotate this up here. You don't want it to hit right over here on the machine as it's coming around rotating. All right. Now I'll go ahead, and that's why they give you two sets of clips to kind of make it flat. If you need to, pull more of that bill out, or the sweat band, I mean. All right. Another clip over here. And there we go. So then this is ready to sew. Pop my clips off here, slide it off, and there we go. Let me rotate this back around a little bit. All right. So now I can look at my hat here. I can see that it's nice and flat. It will have some wrinkles on the side just because it doesn't have that that backing underneath here, but if I slide this across with my fingers, I can tell that it's going to be uh, nice and smooth going across there. Um, if you are doing something, you notice there's no structure in this. If I am doing stuff where I want a 270 design that wraps from the side of the hat all the way to the other side of the hat, then I might want to use more than one piece of backing in there to give it more structure. Because the cool thing about Tearaway, I can load that stuff up with two, three pieces and all I have to do is tear it out one at a time. All right. So let's go on and do another hat. See, it's really easy to do something with structure because that gives you that form right there. So that way it, it stays hooped really easily. But say we're doing something like an unstructured hat. You're a little bit more of a pain in the butt. Because they have no button. They don't have any structure. You're going to have to give it structure. All right, so let's go ahead and act like we're hooping again. Get my clips in here. So that way it holds it without it moving. If you don't like sitting down, uh, definitely put this around kind of like your chest level. So that way when you're hooping, you're using your arms and not your back. If you do probably 100 hats in a day, if you have to bend over to hoop your hats, 
your back will kill you. <laughs> Just warning. So make sure to kind of when you if you want to set up a, a station to hoop hats like you're doing a bunch of them. If you have like multi head machines, you're hooping say four hats, twelve hats at a time uh, per run. Then yeah, put this thing up a little bit higher, so right 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 around here. So that way you're just pulling it around like this, so that way you don't have to bend over. It really helps with production. All right. So let's see. Let's get an unstructured hat. The difference between the unstructured, if you notice, there's no stiffness to it. All right. So this means when it's on this machine, it can move around a whole bunch. And then you'll have puckering. Uh, it looks like it's like pushing the fabric over to one side. Kind of a, just a, kind of a pain in the ass in, the, in general. All right. So, but one thing I can do is, like I said, add more backing. All right. I can give it buckram. I can put multiple pieces of this stuff inside the hat so that way it gives it stiffness. Now I'm doubled. So it's already, you can tell that this is stiff right here. There's no flex to it. If I bend this over, squeeze it, it's not really, it holds its form. All right, we might even go with a third piece because it's a real loose hat. Not a big deal. Okay, so we'll hold these to the side. Or actually, I'll do a little rotation on them. So that's my old little ribbon trick for doing wrapping presents. This gives it a little curve, so that way when I put it up here on my uh, on my uh, hoop here, that it kind of holds to form. All right, I'll undo the back. It helps it open it up a little bit more. Same thing as before, without that sweatband. Pull the hat around. Like I said, it doesn't matter if that sweatband touches. It's just whether or not that bill fits down in there. If it's got a lot of curve to the bill, you can flex it out. Just don't hold it. And as soon as you take it off, you can kind of roll it between your fingers, and it will take that curve back again. Push it down in that groove a little bit. Hold it in place. Pull my band around. Make sure those teeth are in that seam, just like before. latch it down. If it is, if it does pull a little bit to the side, compensate for that when you're putting on the hat when you, before you strap it down. Rotate the hat just a little bit this way, so that way when you strap it, it rotates and centers itself. Or, if you before you put your clips on, you can do some micro adjustments going back and forth just by grabbing the bill and kind of sliding it. Just be careful that you don't rip it or damage the threads that connect the bill to the uh, crown of the hat as well. All right, so then pull it nice and taut. So you can already see right here, I don't know if I can see the shadow, that it's nice and smooth going across there. It's almost like a structured hat. Now. Oops, a little clip came undone. I verify that the teeth is over here in the same part of the seam as it is over in here, so it's not like twisted this way. Then I have to use these clips for it to kind of keep this structure so that way it stays nice and taut. So I take my finger, kind of smooth it around here, and clip on my clip. Make sure that you face those clips facing inside or they're going to go shooting across the room when you try to sew them. All right. If you're still like, say you've got one of those like neoprene hats where they're like, uh, like athletic bikers or whatever, that was real stretchy um, and things like that. What I could do to give this a little bit of extra is to maybe put a little bit of embroidery spray adhesive on that top layer of backing. So that way when I uh, pull that around, and smooth it out that it sticks to the backing and then technically you really did give it buckram because that's what that stiffness is in the back there. It's just an extra piece of material to give it like structure. Alright, 
So now, when I take this off, look what happens. It keeps to its form. All right, so now I've got a nice stiff surface to sew across of. All right, some other stuff when you're actually designing or even if you send your designs out, make sure that your, uh, your digitizer knows that you're digitizing four hats. There's techniques for that. You want to kind of go from the center out. So if you were doing letter, you would start from the middle, work your way out, and then work your way back, sometimes going back and forth. So that way it spreads the material out instead of just kind of pushing the material. All right, so I hope that was a little bit more informative and it makes it a little bit easier for you. But like I said, you have to make sure that this, these little teeth right here go from seam all the way across in the same seam. Okay. So does anybody have any questions as of right now? And uh, just so I can, uh, just to inform you too, it's the exact same technique for doing uh, cat or for doing visors. I know low profile visors are a real pain to do because you do not have a large sewing field for those. All right. With these, uh, with these short little sewing fields, they're only about maybe an inch or so tall. That limits you of how big of a design you go across on one of those visors. The ones that have the big logos on it and things like that, those were probably done prefabricated by those large manufacturers like Nike, Titleist, whatever, um, done before the hat was actually assembled. Uh, so that's why they can do that. So for regular aftermarket um, custom embroidery, it does have its limits. But one of the tricks you can do is you can control the start point of your embroidered design. So if you understand that there are limits, uh, when you put your um, machine in cap mode, uh, it, get, it sets up a sewing field, an actual safety limit for the machine. So if it goes too close to the bill, it says limit error. If you go too far out of its sewing field over left or right, then it gives you a limit error saying that it's not within the safety zone of the actual hat or of the machine and it doesn't want to hit metal or anything like that. So by changing the start points and typically your start points in your uh, for your embroidery designs are in the center of the design. So it always traces like the little safety range here. It'll trace from the center out. All right, draws a box around it. Okay. So how do I know where the center of this is? All right. It's kind of a pain in the butt because if I'm off just a little bit like I'm too close to the bill. It gives me that error, and then I got to start over, readjust it, and so forth. So in the software, when you set up a design for caps, change your start point from the center to the center bottom, right? Because when you put this on your machine, on the cap driver, you can take it right to the edge of the limit, and your machine will stop, all right? And then you click it up like one or two micro notches, so that way it's just above that limit. And then when you trace, it traces from that bottom up because you are in the center bottom. So I hope that if you try that, you can really control where the bottom of your design will be. You can get it as close as humanly power, as close as your machine will let you to the bill of the hat. Okay. So I hope that was a cool little trick. Uh, and it will definitely help you out when you're doing hats. If you're doing beanies, all right, beanies, I would not use my hat hoop. I would use the flat personally. I would flip the hat inside out and make sure that I use like a marking pen or something like that so I can know where the top of the design should be. So that way I don't get confused and don't rotate it the proper way. So when I flip it back to the correct position of the hat like it was being worn, that it's not upside down or something to that order. Okay. Um, also, say you want to hoop the back of a hat, like go above that little arch here. That's another one where I will not um, use my hat hoop. Okay, I will use my flats. All right, let me explain that a little bit further. All right, a lot of people too, and I had this in one of my previous webinars about this second strap here. The only thing this second strap is, is a guide. So that way when you have it on the machine, 
that the top strap here doesn't have this in and out movement. It kind of acts as a brace to keep it butted up to this bottom bar here. So it doesn't matter if it's loose, big, has a bigger loop in it or whatever. It's just kind of keeping it so that way this stays at a certain distance from top bottom here to the top there. And then when it comes across, it's the same thing over here. So that way it keeps it straight. So that's just a guide. All right, let's put this out of the way real quick. So let's talk about doing the back of a hat. All right, the backs of hats are, can be an enigma for a lot of people and stuff like that. All right, a little trick that I've learned long ago is that if I'm putting the name, just like a short little name, and it's not something that's going to be like an entire sentence or something like that, I will digitize it straight. All right, so that way when I hoop it, it'll sew straight across there. But once they strap this in the back here, it kind of curves itself. You don't have to make it go with that exact arch because these little arches here are different on, on, on almost every hat. There's not like a, a universal standard for everything, so which makes it even more of a pain in the butt. So what I'd do if I had like a name or a company logo or a saying or something like that, I'd just do it straight across or even just as a minor arc. All right, so when I was telling you that I don't use my hat hoop, I'll use my flap. Another little thing... Uh, and I don't know if they actually sell these on the market or not, but I actually made one out of a plank of wood that was probably about yay wide and then about yay long. Sort of like this right here, but maybe not as wide as this is. And what I did was take a router. Let me grab a hoop real quick and I'll show you. Hold on one second, guys. I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab a different hoop real quick. All right, sorry about that, guys. Had to get some of my other hoops here. Okay, so now I've got to think, what am I going to be putting on here, all right? So depending on the size of the design is the design of the hoop. I don't really want to go anything large across the back here. It just looks weird. Um, and you wouldn't be able to get it hooped properly either because you have this little button up here on the top. So you've only got about the maximum of maybe about two inches that you can sew there. Um, and then you can sew all the, like from about right here all the way over across to about right here. So there are certain limits of like sewing field that you have to worry about. But usually most of the designs that customers bring in will not be something weird where you have to put some major big ass design on the back. I have done stuff where I've done like little symbols like right over here on the side. Uh, to do those, um, they have the fast frames. Uh, fast frames are a like a window frame hooping system that you use sticky backing. Uh, it's like a tearaway backing, but it's like a sticker. So the sticky side faces up, so that way when I place this on top of it, I just stick it to it, and then it has that left and right forward and backward movement to make your embroidery stitches. All right, well, let's do the back of the hat here. So let's see, going back to where I was explaining making a board, all right, and I have like a hooping table that's separate. Like I have my hooping table that gives me prepping the garments, getting them ready to go on the machine. And then I also have a finishing table, which is across, that when the, the garments are done, I put them over there to be able to trim out the backing, trim off extra threads and anything like that. All right. So using your imagination, finding a board that's probably, I don't know, probably about seven inches wide, like a little plank, eight inches wide. But I will place my hoop and draw a circle around the outside edge of it. And then I will route, use a router, to the, to, to the inside here. So I cut this entire shape out of that piece of wood. So that way my frame can sit down in there and it holds it for me. All right? So it would be sitting on the table like this and it would be holding it. So I'm going to use this to get this out of my way real quick. I'm going to use just the machine to show you an example here. Let me rotate this back up. 
So imagine this is my piece of wood right here holding my bottom frame. All right. So then I'm going to actually place my hat up over it like so. So let's see how it kind of spreads it out. So normally you can technically use your machine to do this, but it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Your arms get in the way, things like that. So that's why I would say make a hooping board. All right. Always make sure that you have your uh, hoops facing the right way. Uh, you're going to be feeding the, this will always go towards the inside of your machine. It does not have it on the opposite side. So as this fits in, that's how it clicks into the machine here. All right. So what I'll do is place my hoop up there. Loosen it up just a hair. And I try to get the center seam to kind of face this little nut right here. I'll also use the lowest part of the hoop to kind of make that center seam go right towards it and then point it at the same direction so that way it goes straight. And then I press down. Keeps it nice and taut here. So that way I can slide it on my machine, rotate my design 180 degrees so that way it sews upside down, and then sew it directly across there or even a slight arc. But I want to make sure that this line right here is completely straight when I put it onto the machine. So that way it's straight up and down with, or perpendicular with the machine right here. Does that make sense? All right. So then you're saying that, oh, I didn't hoop it with any backing. Then I have the float technique. Floating is basically taking another piece of backing that's not in the hoop here, It was in the hoop right like this. I can take it, slide it underneath here. And now when it makes that first stitch, it's attaching that backing to the garment. So it's not actually in the hoop, but it's floated underneath. There we go. All right, guys. Now, you may see that the arms over here, I just haven't set it up to do a flat yet. It had the big jacket back on there. So, yeah, you cannot sew with just one arm. <laughs> just FYI. All right. So, I hope this has been very informative for everyone. Uh, does anyone have any questions as of right now? Okay, um, other tips for um, digitizing designs for caps. Okay, so one of the things you do have to keep in mind anytime you're digitizing for hats is uh, the size. You've got a specific size and some uh, design softwares and stuff like that actually give you like a template that gives you the field that you can create. Um, so just remember, it's only about two and a half inches tall that you can uh, get a legit uh, design on the front of a hat. And you've only got about, you don't really want to go over from seam to seam here. Here, let me see, since it's not a black hat, y'all can actually see the panels here. You don't want to go, you probably want about a finger width from this seam over and a finger width over. So it's about four, four and a half inches across this way, but only about two and a half this way. So make sure not to try to go over that. And if you do get to that, kind of get to those higher type logos that are large designs, changing that center point, uh, the start point from the center to the center bottom will make a huge difference. So that way you can get it, that design centered up here so it's not like up, the sewing up here on top of the crown. You don't ever want stitches to go above this because it just rides up on top of your head. Um, also, uh, telling your digitizer or doing it yourself, uh, start digitizing from the center out. So you would have, like, say, a graphic that you're laying stitches on top of. Say it was said, we'll say Heath across here. So it's got H-E-A-T-H. -H. 
All right, so I'd probably start with the A, so that way it starts flat, and then go to the E, and then go to the T, and then go to the H, and then go to the H. So that way it kind of spreads as it goes. So those are just some basic stuff. Um, if you're doing a design where you want it dead center on this side panel right here, I can even hoop it once it's there and hoop it a little bit off center. And then I can rotate my sheen around so that way I can center it directly in that panel. Doing a 270 design where you're doing both, it limits you uh, to like the size of the design and you have to make sure that you are completely perfectly hooped when you're doing that. So sometimes doing them separately will really help. Uh, doing the design, like if you have multiple designs on that, doing them separately really does help. All right. Right? Tension is one of the biggest things on cap designs as well. If you don't have a good tension, then you'll have like stitches pulling out the top there if your bobbin's like too loose or your top tension is too loose. Um, if you do not have it nice and taut or have that structure like we made by putting backing in it and stuff like that, you'll have a thing called flagging where it's jumping a lot and you'll have the little loops coming out, those type of things. Um, I like to run a tension test pretty much any time I like switch out threads. I'll do a tension test maybe about once a week uh, just to make sure or anytime I have um, sewing issues uh, and I do those on a flat. I know the next webinar that I'm going to be giving in about like 20 minutes will be going through tension. So if y'all haven't signed up for that, please go ahead and do that now. And uh, we'll go through and we'll kind of demystify uh, the machine and how to set proper tension. Tension is one of the biggest problems regardless of any sewing machine. I don't care how expensive it was or anything like that. If you do not have your tension set properly, it will not sew worth a damn. All right. So any more questions on um, hat hooping and kind of like tips and tricks or anything like that? Uh, has anybody been having any kind of major problems or any anything to that order? I'll wait for a question to pop up here. All right. So if uh, if we don't have any more questions or anything, I hope this was informative. I did video this webinar and stuff like that, so if you need a copy of it, please contact our uh, support department and we can see if we can get that over to you. Uh, so that way you can just have this explanation if you want to uh, show it to anybody else. Uh, it's totally up to you. Um, also, uh, we will be doing these type of webinars on a weekly basis. If you have specific subjects that you would like to know about, um, then uh, definitely uh, keep uh, address of the calendar. Uh, to get to those calendars, you can go to caswebinars.com. Um, we do a bunch of the uh, direct-to-garment webinars as well. Uh, if you are interested in getting in, we kind of see what that involves. It's the perfect add-on for an embroidery company. Uh, it's basically your logo type of your business. Um, also, there's a lot of uh, support topics on our website, and that is support.coldesi.com. Uh, once you get to that landing page, uh, across the top header bar is you have our different types of equipment. If you hold your mouse over the, whether it be embroidery or something to that order, it'll have a pop-down menu, and then you can choose which machine you have, and it has training videos, frequently asked questions, all kinds of good documents, things like that. The more you know, the better you'll be at this type of an industry. Okay. So I hope everybody had a good time. Um, we'll, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of a break, and then I will be back for my next webinar. Um, definitely, if you have any other questions that we didn't touch on here or concerns or something else is going on with your machine, uh, then uh, definitely contact the support department. We'll be glad to get on the phone with you and try to help you troubleshoot through your issues. Hope you all had a great day, and I will talk to you soon.